Okay. Um, good morning. We will start the our our lessons. This is the fourth lesson. Is uh, we will do a, a kind of a revision on the sacraments of the initiation today. Okay. And uh, let's begin with our opening prayer. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Spirit of wisdom and understanding, enlighten our minds to perceive the mysteries of the universe in relation to eternity. Spirit of right judgment and courage, guide us and make us firm in our baptismal decision to follow Jesus' way of love. Spirit of knowledge and reverence, help us see the lasting value of justice and mercy in our everyday dealing with one another. May we respect life as we work to solve problems of family and nation, economy and ecology. Spirit of God, set our faith, hope and love into new action each day. Fill our lives with wonder and awe in your presence, which penetrates all creation. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Um, of course, I mean, the topic we talk about, you know, we, we know very well already. So I would like to extend a little bit, okay? So it is more for your room, growth and hopefully okay you'll be able to make good use of what you have um, developed and translate it so that our children will benefit okay it is through you all right so i will be talking about something which yeah you you everyone knows but first of all let's have a revision first okay first of all Question number one, right? This is what we learn. Okay, sacrament something, okay, visible, which convey invisible graces. Okay, easy. Now, I'm going to introduce a new concept to you, but it's, not, it's nothing new. I said, Jesus Christ is the pride module sacrament. Jesus is a sacrament. Are you able to accept that? Jesus, is a sacrament. Why? Why is Jesus a sacrament? <laughs> is Jesus visible? Yes. yes, he is the visible, you know, God. Okay, of I mean, the, he is the visible image form of the in, invisible Father. You can see him, you can touch him. All right. I mean, uh, this is what the apostles say. All right, and he bring us grace, salvation grace. And that's why um, we can see here. And then we call him the primordial because it's very, very beginning. Okay, that's why we call primordial sacrament. Actually, it is something to do with the mystery of incarnation. It's related. You know the meaning of incarnation? Okay, God takes up flesh and become man. Well, you know, logically we say God cannot die, all right? I mean, how can a God die? But God said, okay, let me die and, and, and show you how I die. So it is possible. God said, why not? Why can't I die? I die. Why do you want to die? Because I love my creation, okay? I want to to pay you know, all the debts, to be fair, to be just, this is righteousness. This is the reason why, okay, God is ingenious. So he take up flesh and become man and die like a man because man is mortal, okay? God is immortal. But God said, I can be mortal <laughs> for, your, for your sake. Oh, this is a lovely mystery. And of course, because, um, to, because of the, uh, 
it's, it's, it's an uh, indication, it's a, a symbol to show us the meaning of incarnation. So sacrament, the whole concept of sacrament is related to the mystery of incarnation. All right. Now, of course, we cannot tell the children it's too difficult for them, but I hope, okay, you can extend your understanding a little bit, okay, on uh, in this area. Okay, revision. The church is also a sacrament. The church is visible. You can see the buildings, the people, it's visible. And then from the church, okay, it gives out the saving grace. So the church, we call it the fundamental sacrament, okay, from which we have the seven sacraments. And actually, re we recite it every week in Mass. I said, we, we all recite the Greek. We say, I believe in one holy, right, Catholic Apostolic Church, right? And the holy, I mean, if the church is not holy, we have a lot of scandal, right? <laughs> but we say, yes, the church is holy because, we, because of, of, of Christ, all right? And then Christ made use of the church to channel grace and holiness to make the believers holy. Of course, some of us fail and, you know, bring, you know, scandalize the church. So it is not God's fault, it is our fault, okay? But no matter what, okay, God still loves us. Whether we, are, we, we look a bit ugly, no, not a bit, very ugly, even though the church looks very, very ugly. We have, I mean, we have great faith, and we have but to believe in Jesus that still he loves us. And then he will make his effort to make us beautiful. All right, so sacraments and, and all other means, okay, God made use of it to make his bride, the church, beautiful. Okay, but well, we have to wait until the end of the world, okay, for this to come true. All right, now, so we, what, what you say in the, in, the, in the church, we have a kind of, um, uh, I think last time I talked about that during the, uh, the talk on the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I, I mentioned one particular, um, what should I say, mortal, okay, lex orante, uh, lex credanti. Well, never mind. It, 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 it simply means the law of prayer, sacraments, liturgy, is the law of faith. We believe in this, and therefore we pray. Our prayers show what we believe, okay? Our prayer, our liturgy show our faith. And we are, so what we are doing with the sacraments, with mass, with liturgy, and all this is an expression of our faith. That's why religious freedom is important because when you're forbidden to do something, wow, you cannot fully express what you believe. Okay, so uh, just a few points. I just want you to bear this in mind, to remind our children, okay? When you mentioned about the sacraments of what? Penance, anointment, etc., remind them of God's mercy. Of course, I mean, everything is related to God's word mercy. Ah, this is important. Getting Mary in church. Oh my God. Uh, recently I did some pre, not, actually not pre, but it's already, they already got married, <laughs> but they have to come back to validate their marriage. <clears throat> Why, what happened? Because they get married, you know, according to fashion, they go to the hotel. And they have before a lawyer, and then they, 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 they enter into a marriage, okay, with this ceremony. But we Catholics should be, I mean, should hold our, you know, matrimony, you know, in church. So please remind our children, okay. And uh, lastly, support our 
the clergy, okay, the civil servant. This is uh, the uh, well, the sacraments of the holy orders, right? All right, this is what basically what we learned last time. Of course, there are still a lot of other things, but I highlight these for you to keep in mind. So today we will focus more on the RCIA. All right, what is the full name of RCIA? <laughs> oh, you, you know, huh? I assume all of you should know, huh? <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll turn for right of Christian initiation of adults. Hey, adults, huh? Who about well, children? They're not yet adults, right? So we need to water down a little bit, okay? So this is our job, okay? This is our job. And what I've been talking about would be very much, you know, a little bit high level in a sense that it's more suitable for adults. So it is your job to translate it and make them I mean, all the, the materials appropriate for our children. Okay, basically, okay, a person becomes a disciple. Ah, how, to, how to bring along this concept of disciple to our children, right? Now, so this is something you have to bear in mind, all right? Uh, well, I usually I would say, okay, they are friends. Okay, make Jesus your friend. But uh, hopefully somehow you'll be able to establish that more than a friend, okay, he's your teacher, all right? Not, not just a friend. So we are the disciple. All right, teacher, student, relationship, okay, a little bit closer. But of course, disciple would be more demanding, all right? But okay, step by step, all right? Okay, Jesus is your friend. Jesus is a teacher. Jesus is your master. Wow. It, you know, all right. And then uh, in time, Christians become like Christ. They are becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. And then hopefully they will become Christ. Uh -huh. We are ambitious. Okay. Good morning. All right. And then, okay, in a church, we accomplish this by three sacraments. Now, don't worry, I will send you this PowerPoint, okay? So no need to, to copy, all right? Focus, reflect, all right? Now, so simply put, baptism is the beginning of a new life, a new spiritual life, not a physical one, spiritual. Of course, it's physical as well. Confirmation is the uh, strengthening, all right? Make it strong, okay? Why should you be strong? Why should I be strong? Can I, can I not be weak? Well, if somebody feel comfortable to be weak, it's not too bad. Okay, let me assure you. So some of our students will be a bit, you know, uh, not according to our standard. Don't worry, okay? Mm -hmm. Of course, we should, we should point out, okay, uh, this is not good enough. You can do better. We, we have confidence you can do better. But, um, you know, do not uh, discourage them. We need to strengthen them. All right, and then Eucharist nourish, okay, nourish with Christ's body and blood, transforming him in Christ, okay, within Jesus Christ, with the support of Jesus Christ, and hopefully he will become a Christ. He himself becomes the beloved son of God. Okay? So this is our target. Well, it is target in general, okay, for every Christian. And I would say these three sacraments is actually related to our belief in the Blessed Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So how do these three sacraments relate with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? It's you now. Yeah, say whatever in your mind. Have you ever thought about this before? 
I mean, I think you know it, but you, 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 not, you have not you know, explicitly mentioned it. So today, I would like you to focus on this. The, we believe in the Blessed Trinity. Whatever we do, okay, is related to the Blessed Trinity. In particular, these three sacraments. So how are these sacraments related with the Blessed Trinity? Go ahead. Okay, okay go, go, yeah. <laughs> um, these three are related to one another. They are equal. God the Father, to distinguish God the Father is the creator. And before the creator, God the Son is already there through the word. God and created the, the universe through, <clears throat> through the through word, right? Through the Son, right? Through the Son. Good. And the Son is the Son. It's our Savior. So our Savior. And this Savior was led by the Holy Spirit before she do her mission. Because that's who I think of. Holy Spirit is the our, our sanctifier or the backbone of, of our faith. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Don't rush. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Rest, rest, rest. All right. Okay. Go on. Go on. Yes. I mean, yes, very good. I mean, you mentioned the relation, the relationship among the three persons of the Blessed Trinity. But I want you to map the three persons, Father, into the sacrament. I want it to be related to, to baptism, to, to, to confirmation, and to Eucharist. Okay, how do you map the three persons to the three sacraments? <laughs> so we have God the Father, who Aurora mentioned, the Creator. Baptism is our uh, initiation to the family of God. So you can relate it as creation. Yes. God the Son is the Redeemer, the Savior. You can relate it to uh, confirmation, which strengthens the faith. Mm. And God, the Holy Spirit, is the advocate, which nourishes us in our life. So that way you can relate the Father through baptism, welcomes us into the family, the Christian family. Jesus is our strength. Mm. He's given us the strength as our Savior, and God the Holy Spirit nourishes that strength so that we will grow in our faith. Great, thank you. Okay, so this is one interpretation, one kind of mapping. You can have your idea of mapping, all right? And, and, and it doesn't mean that your mapping is wrong. Okay, this is how you understand it, and so you map it in this way. Is there any other way of mapping? Yeah, you accept that, right? Yeah, okay, fine. So when you tell the children, it doesn't matter, all right? As long as you are able to arouse their imagination, they're, they're saying, okay, um, yeah, of course, we, we have some, you know, model answer. <laughs> All right. Together, the three sacraments, okay, illustrate the Blessed Trinity. And the Blessed Trinity is important because we Christians believe in two things, Blessed Trinity and the divinity and humanity of Jesus Christ, one Okay, one nature, God, two persons. I mean, there's a little, 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 one, one person, two nature, I'm not mix it up, I'm sorry. One person, the son of God, two natures, humanity and divinity. <laughs> okay, the father is a source. So it maps into baptism. So baptism maps into God, the father, the source. And uh, during baptism, we keep on reminding the symbolic meaning of water, creation. During creation, what happened? All right, water. The, the Holy Spirit, you know, hover over the water, right? So actually, it's, it's mixed together, but we, we focus this on the creation part, God the creator. The great deluge, 
What is that? Noah, the Greek flood. What does that mean? What what is water to do with with that? It cleanses us. Cleanses our original and original and personal sin when we receive this baptism. And Jesus Christ used the water of the Lord to 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 deliver for chosen people to enter into the world. Okay, so basically the Noah's Ark, all right, give us the second chance. We are born and we are terminated, contaminated by the original sins, right? But God gives us a second chance. So Noah's stories, the main message should be, okay, God gives us a second chance. What about Exodus? What's that to do with water? Oh, the parting of the world, see, right? Everyone knows that. It's related to baptism. When you go through the water, you have freedom, right? So this is the key ideas over there. Of course, there are still others. The baptism of Jesus in River Jordan, etc. right? We will mention that later. So, but it is, everything is mapped into Father, the God of Father, because it is the source, all right? The source. And yes, we agree. Jesus is actually, okay, the tree of life. Remember, God planted the tree of life, the tree of uh, knowledge of, of good and evil, right? All right, these are legends. These are just, you know, myths, stories. But yes, there is a message there. Jesus is the fruit, okay? Jesus is the tree of life. Remember the story of mana, right? Okay, God sustained, you know, give us food, nourish us. And of course, the Holy Spirit. Okay, through confirmation, we give them strength. Okay, so we can have the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Remember all this? Okay, I'll, I'll mention that later. All right, now we'll focus now on, on individual, okay, Sacraments. The first one should be, you know, baptism. <laughs> I love this shell. <laughs> We're using this. Okay. Well, oh, you did. Right. Um, I will. I will make it short. Okay, and in a, in a uh, summarized way. Okay. We. What, what is our scriptural basis of, of this sacrament? The first part is Matthew chapter three. If you remember, this part of the story talks about the baptism of Jesus. I want to focus on verse 14 to 15. Okay. Um, John the Baptist told Jesus, it, it should be I that receive your baptism. Not, not you know, <laughs> I baptize you, but you should baptize me, right? But Jesus said, let it be done for what? The fullness of righteousness. Something like that, right? What does that mean? It means Jesus did not need baptism himself, right? Because it's sinless. Yet Jesus went into the water to sanctify the water. John the Baptist baptized people, but that baptism is unable to forgive sins. All right? Okay, so Jesus came to complete his work. All right, so Jesus sanctified the water so that from now on, water is able to wash away the original sin. All right, so that's the basis. Chapter 28 is the last uh, chapter. Actually, this is the last two verses. Jesus said, okay, go to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, right? It's from here. So that's why we say Jesus established the sacraments of baptism here. This is the scriptural basis. When should they be baptized? Well, as early as possible, all right? In ancient time, it is all because of the, of the what, um, infant mortality. So they, they do that. And also, it is also a Jewish custom. Eight days after birth, okay, for a boy. I think even for, for a girl, all right? This should be eight days. 
And on the A day, they will name will be given. Before that, no name. No name, which means your name is not written in the book of life. You know, this is the belief. So they, the, the son, the first son of David and uh, Bathsheba, do you remember the story? The son died, okay, seven days. And so no name. So, okay. The, the meaning, people without name. Okay, in the, in the Bible, it means they have no part in heaven. Remember the story of, in the Gospel of Luke, uh, the rich man and Lazarus, the beggar. The rich man was his name. No, no name, right? Interesting. The beggar, oh, he's called Lazarus. He has a name. When he has a name, which means his name is written in the book of life. So name is important. So here at baptism, you have a new name, <laughs> right? Okay, we talk about form. Last time you talk about form and matter, right? So the form is the invocation of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son. All right, but when you study the book of Acts of the Apostles, they, they, they were baptized in different forms. Uh, baptized in the name of Paul, it baptized in the name of Peter, it baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. But fine, we finalize it, okay? The church finalizes it, okay, in the Gospel of Matthew. It must be baptism in the name of the Holy Spirit, uh, Holy, the Blessed Trinity. Nowadays, we have many, many denominations. The Catholic Church recognizes most of the baptisms because they baptize in the name of the Blessed Trinity. But there are a few churches, okay, the Catholic Church say, no, we do not recognize the baptism of these churches, okay? Uh, we have a list, don't worry. Now, yes, yeah, truly, we have a list. Here, the form is important, okay, because, okay, you go swimming. How is swimming different from baptism? I'm not joking. Okay, every day, okay, you go bathing, right? You clean. Baptism also cleans you, right? The difference is, I baptize you in the name of the Father. I'm not, you show me the swimming pool. I baptize you. No way. Come on. Okay. So the form distinguishes it. <laughs> We're not joking. We're serious here. The matter is usually water. People usually ask, hey, without water. What can you do? No baptism. Oh, sweat. Okay, <laughs> enough. Uh, well, you know, now usually, I don't know. I don't know whether children would ask this kind of funny questions. You've got to be prepared. I mean, in adult classes, you know, some of, no, no, not in adult classes, you know, in, in secondary school where I, I taught, you know, those kids there, they like to challenge you. When you talk about this, you ha, ah, no water. What should you do? Huh? What can you do? Huh? Ah, well, we have to think of some way to convince them. And we have a lot of H2O in the air, boys. <laughs> right? Okay, whatever. Okay, try to make them, you know, happy. And, you know, accept your, your teaching, all right? But of course, there are cases in which even blood well, especially there are people, okay, the unbaptized martyrs, they, they do not have the chance to baptize, you know, uh, formally. However, they still believe in Christ and they're willing to die for Christ. And how can you deny him of, you know, heaven, even if not baptized, what's wrong? His blood is good enough, isn't it? So, matter and form. Who baptized, okay, ordinary, we, clergy, okay, priests, deacons, you know, in case of necessity, okay, in the danger of death, oh, he's dying, and he wants, now, intention is important. I, I think I mentioned last time about making movies, right? Making movies, okay, uh, maybe they're making a movie for the mass, they're making movies for the sacraments, 
Then, uh, you know, one of the actors, he, he, he was not baptized, and then the priest baptized him in the, you know, the movie. Is it a baptism then? Once again, we say the intention, all right? Of course, I mean, that guy probably would be, okay, I want to be baptized. Then, yes, even though it's a movie, it's baptized. So the intention, wow, I can skip, you know, 18 months of getting his arm on the title. <laughs> All right, silly thing, but uh, yes. So including the person himself, in the case, okay, the plane is <laughs> punching down. Okay, you got less than two minutes. Uh, perhaps a priest over there, a lot of you know people grumble over here, okay, forgive my sins, <laughs> confession. Okay, he may not have the opportunity. All right, then he baptizes himself if he wants to, okay? In case of necessity. All right, okay, effects. Here I will give you a list of all those things together with uh, the um, the passage, okay? So forgiveness of original sin, personal sin, uh, birth into a new life, okay? John chapter three, five, you become a new creature, become the adoptive son, adoptive sons of the father. You know, this is the popular idea of St. Paul. Become a member. Now here the word member means member of the body, okay? Your limb, the eye, the, the, et cetera. So first Corinthian, uh, you belong to Christ. Now, this is important because we believe in the communion of saints. This is one of our belief. Okay, so, it's, so everything we do is related to what we believe, okay? And then all of us are called to be saints. Okay, we are supposed to be saints, Roman, Chapter one, verse seven, Ephesians. Okay, you can you can look them up afterwards. All right. Ah, this is lovely. You become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Actually, Paul was saying, "Don't defy your body. Your body is holy. Don't do dirty things with your body." <laughs> you know, this is what he's trying to tell us. So it is not simply related to our prayer, our beliefs. It is also related to our life, our morality. Okay, you're supposed to be the holy temple. Then your action should have a source of holiness. All right. So don't do dirty things. Don't do evil. That's the reason why um, the the sacraments of penance is a way to make up. All right, you fail. All right, let's do it all over again. Okay. Now, this is not from the Bible. This is from, well, actually, it's a summary of the Bible. Lumen Gentium. What do you know what Lumen Gentium is? Okay. Have you heard of the Second Vatican Council? There are four constitutions. You know, they, they, they give out constitution, they give out degrees, they give out, you know, documents, etc. So one of the four is called Lumen Gentium, okay? Light of the world is talking about the church. We Christians are the light of the world. This is what Jesus told us, Matthew, okay? You're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So... Here in paragraph 31, okay, he talks about all of us through baptism, we partake in the threefold office of Christ. Jesus is a king, Jesus is a priest, and Jesus is a prophet. So we, as a king, we are king of oh, well, queens, all right? <laughs> all right, if you want to, okay, we expand the kingdom of God through our services. We serve, we do not rule over people, we serve them. As a priest, we represent the humanity, oh, sorry, to offer sacrifice, okay, misspelling, I'll correct that. Sacrifice, okay. There are a lot of people who do not go to mass. We go to mass for them. So our responsibility is holy, it's noble, 
please, if people don't go, we go. If people forgot to say prayer, we pray. Not just for ourselves, we pray for them. I mean, for their stead. As a prophet, we proclaim God's word. God's message of reconciliation, the gospel. Okay, uh, this is a, a, a passage I love most. The second letter to Corinthians chapter five, verse 20, all of us are ambassadors of Christ. You are ambassadors of Christ. We are ambassadors of reconciliation. And then now, uh, because baptism imprints in, and in the, the literal uh, yeah, spiritual sign, cannot be rubbed away. Okay, so with this, we are consecrated. We can, I mean, we can partake in worship. We become a sacrifice ourselves. We are consecrated with this baptism. And therefore, baptism cannot be repeated. Once is enough. Okay, so after baptism, no matter how many times you jump into the pool to swim, it's not baptism. You're already baptized, all right? If you have never been <laughs> baptized before, well, unless you're so crazy and then you jump into the pool and I baptize myself in the name of God. No, you are not in the danger of death. All right? Unless you jump into it to die. Come on. You want, you want to kill yourself? No. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> so anyway, so once. Okay, we have some questions. Actually, it's a reminder. It's a, a reminder. The first one. Remember this question last time I talked about? It's about marriage, right? If I love my partner, should I get married? Oh. If I believe in God, do I need to be baptized? The answer is this. It's necessary. Okay. So, how are you going to defend the necessity? All right. Of course, faith is necessary. But is faith enough? Not enough. Okay, there are others together. Okay, they become sufficient uh, conditions, sufficient support. Okay, faith alone is not enough. It's very clear in the Bible. Faith with faith and together with charity, you have to work with faith and work together. So faith alone is not enough. So that's the reason why. Okay, you need to be baptized. And even Jesus is baptized. How can you say you do not need baptism? Wow, you are holier than Jesus. Right? Now, this question, think about it more deeply. If baptism is necessary for salvation, but what about people who have never known Jesus? There are people who were born before Jesus, right? I, I, I always like to quote the case of Confucius. Do you know Confucius? Yeah, a very famous philosopher, scholar in ancient China. He's never known Jesus. There's no such thing in his mind about Jesus. So, um, was uh, Confucius saved? I always say, if he goes to hell, what am I? <laughs> I'm no better than him. So, they have no faith in God, no faith in Jesus. Can they be saved? Uh oh. Have you, have, have you thought about this question before? Yeah. So how are you going to answer? I think it, would people challenge you with that? Or you ask the question yourself? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, baptism, uh, baptism is necessary for something. The people who are fully in that Therefore, no faith in God, we say, yes. Because when, even they don't know God, but inside their hearts, their desire will save them. 
because we have three kinds of baptism. The superplanton is not the same as baptism or water. So they fall under this area. They want to be, they don't, maybe they don't have the chance to know about God, mm -hmm. to know about Jesus. But deep inside them, their faith, their desire to know him is only by them. And unless you did not do anything wrong to your fellow men, Labor, your neighbor, yeah. do, do good things, mm. you don't hurt anyone, and your desire will lead you to somewhere. Good. That's what that <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. And, and any suggestions? To defend those who never heard of God. Yeah. Anyone wants to try? <laughs> now, um, the theologians, they talk about the anonymous Christians. They are Christians. They are not baptized, but their conscience. If people still challenge you, then I will quote them the Bible. Matthew chapter 25, the last judgment. What did Jesus tell those who are blessed? Okay, there are six things that Jesus said, right? Oh, I'm hungry, you gave me food, etc. etc. Did Jesus say, are you baptized? No, right? Jesus is actually talking about Confucius, right? They never got, got have the chance to be baptized. But they follow their conscience, all right? They do good. So Jesus' requirement is very, very low, very minimum. Okay, as long as you love your neighbor, you are doing this to me. You do good to me, then why, why shouldn't I, you know, ban you from heaven, all right? So these are the anonymous Christians. Baptism, you enter the church with the support of the church. There are people who have to fight alone. Well, well, of course, I mean, we are at, we are, ha we have a, a, the advantage. They are at the disadvantage position because they will easily give up. They will be easily defeated without God's grace. It's hard for them. Next question. Why do we baptize children? Yeah, we need to answer this. They have not reached the reason, the reason, and then you baptize them, you force your origin upon them. It's no good, no democracy, no respect for person, blah, 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 blah. Lots of accusations against us. Still, we baptize children. Why? Oh, because you have baptized all the adults who have nobody to baptize, so you baptize your children. Some people call history, the church history, and, and mention this point. Because, you know, all the Europe were baptized, all the others were baptized, okay, so we have no new members. Okay, baptized the children. <laughs> oh, crazy. I mean, the twisty argument. So, so why should we baptize children? We have to make it very clear. Because this is also the reason why we, we run Sunday schools. Okay, if we don't need to baptize them, there's no need to, <laughs> to run Sunday school, right? So why should Sunday schools exist? Why should we baptize children? Uh, this is your your very existence, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. How do you baptize children because of the original original sin? Because uh, we inherit this uh, original sin. Yeah, yeah, sure. And infants and children should be baptized so that they may be born to the divine life of God, grace in Christ Jesus, mm. and become the heirs of heaven and be a part of his church and his mystical body. Yeah. You see, you, you, you make use of the argument of St. Of Augustine. St. Augustine, he invented the concept of original sin to justify the baptism of children. Okay, this is okay. I mean, the, the argument is right. Okay, let's not talk about original sin then, all right? Because uh, some, some Christians, they object to infant baptism. 
they, but they hold on and say, sola scriptura. Do you know the meaning of scripture? Only Bible. Because you cannot find original sin in the Bible. There's no such term, original sin. So don't argue with original sin. Give me some other reasons. Yes. <laughs> Your answer is good, okay? It's, it's not wrong. But you know, there are people who, who want to <laughs> argue. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, as parents, we give the best to our children, right? So this is our ordinary, usual you know, argument. But today I want to bring one extra argument that you, you have to learn. And what is this? This is important. Baptism does not presuppose any human merit. What does that mean? Ah, oh, because you believe, then I baptize you. But there are a lot of people who are not able to exercise their intellect to believe. Not just children. There are old people, dementia. I made this mistake myself. My mother, okay, when she was old, you know, uh, do you believe in Jesus? <sighs> she talks about other things. So it was a long, long time I, I hesitated to baptize my mom until I think it is in 2017 or whatever, the parish, I'm sorry, the diocese issue an instruction, okay, how should we deal with you know, infant baptism, you know, old age baptism, okay? Remember, it is God who chose us. Not you are a good boy, you are a good girl. No, no. Oh, because you have great faith. No, no, no. Baptism does not presuppose any human merit. Not your merit. Not your good work. It is God. God wants to save you. God wants to save everybody. You don't, we don't have to wait until oh, you're old enough, you can exercise the reason, you can choose yourself. Rubbish. You choose, God choose you. Not you choose God. This is John chapter 15. Now, many people, they feel, oh, I'm, I'm greater than God. <laughs> Remember, baptism does not presuppose any human merit. Not just we parents give the best. More than that, children are baptized in the faith of the parents and the faith of the church. Even if the parents say no, the church can say yes. Okay? Some children know I, I, my, my mom, you know, that does not allow me to get baptized. No, the church should baptize you if you believe. But of course, even, you know, it's complicated anyway. So try to deal with each situation in a different manner. My younger brother was never baptized because my mom said, okay, I'll allow one son to get baptized and I keep another son so that when I'm old and I die, my second son will offer incense to me. That's her reason. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, that, that perhaps explains why I a little hesitate to baptize my mom. But of course, I mean, God is merciful, all right? So in the end, I was able to baptize my mother, myself. I do the baptism. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. So, important. What about those who die, infants, mortality, huh? without baptism? Will they be saved? Oh, come on. Go back to the old question, okay? Yes. We trust in God's mercy. All right, don't worry. People who have never got that baptism, they could also be saved. All right, we got to call something. How much time do I have? I'm running out of time. Oh my God, I always overrun. I cannot have to keep myself. All right, very quickly, confirmation. Okay. John chapter 20, 22. Jesus appeared to the apostles. Breathe on them, receive the Holy Spirit. So that's the basis. 
Jesus established confirmation. Okay, receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, first of all, it must be a Catholic. Of course, you know, someone from the Anglican Church, we recognize their baptism, and then they come over to convert into Catholicism. Okay, we don't need to baptize them again. We give them confirmation. So here, the Catholic, uh, you, have, you can call, qualify that a little bit. Uh, now, again, this is Catholic Church, who has reached the age of reason, unlike baptism, confirmation, you need to reach age, okay? But Orthodox, Eastern churches, you know, they give everything, right? No need to reach the age of reason. They have a different theology, okay? So the Catholic Church is very rational. Sorry? The, all the Orthodox Church, Orthodox Church, okay? In the 11th century, you know, before that, there's only one church. But uh, there's some argument, again, um, um, between the, the Greek-speaking believers and the Latin-speaking believers, they fought against each other. And then in, I think, 1054, Greek schism, they broke out away. They, the Orthodox Church, or even yeah, the Eastern Rite uh, churches, Catholic churches, they have a very elaborate liturgy. Uh, they have a different tradition. In a sense, if, for example, we, the Romans are very rational, legal, step by step. For them, oh, never mind, you know, uh, our whole being. So they did not differentiate. Even they gave Holy Communion to children. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. So they are different. Never mind. <laughs> but for us, the form is the anointment, okay, the laying of hand and the prayer, all right? And then the matter, the oil, all right? And then the clergy. It must be, the minister must be bishop, only the bishop. Why? When you read Acts chapter 8, okay, Philip, the deacon, deacon, the, he went to Samaria. A lot of people converted, baptized, but they have not yet received the Holy Spirit. They asked the apostles. So the apostles sent Peter and John, apostles, to them, gave them the Holy Spirit. So that's the reason why only bishops are qualified to do that. We cannot do it. But nowadays, um, the bishop will give faculty power to preach. Okay, you give, you help me do, you know, confirmation because, wow, 300 people. <laughs> The bishop's tired. <laughs> okay, so we have this, but for a short time. Okay, the effects. All right, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, all right. Okay, the third point to string, strengthen. Sorry, to strengthen our bond with the church. All right. So that's why only bishops can be ministers. Okay, that's the reason. I need to do some proofreading uh, to have us bear witness. Confirmation is important. All right, I'll gain confirmation only once, all right? Why is it important? Because this, we talk about the ID cards of Christians. Do you have an ID card? No? Christian ID card, no? You have a baptismal certificates, right? But no ID card, huh? Well, you don't have ID cards, do you? You have. Pope Francis in 2018, 2018, he issues this Gaudete and Exultate. It talks about sanctification in modern world. All of us, it's about all of us. Modern world, very challenging. How can you become holy in modern world? So we talk about that. He said, the Beatitudes are Christian's ID cards. Do you know the Beatitudes? Yeah, Matthew chapter five, right? Okay, wow, poor in spirit, the mournful, the meek, the, you know, etc. all right? It is found in Matthew chapter five. I'll give you the PowerPoint, okay? Don't worry. <laughs> okay, this. So you have to check your ID card. <laughs> have you missed anything? <laughs> okay, wow, it's very challenging. 
right? The A, while well, the A visitors is difficult. Yes, God knows that it's difficult because all of us are fighting a spiritual battle. Again, Gaudata and Isotata, uh, paragraph 158, etc. We're fighting a spiritual warfare with the devil. Okay. Yeah. So the Christian life is constant battle. So what can we do? Ephesians chapter 6. Have you ever heard of the armor of Christians? We have armors. Yes. Okay. We, we, we have all these belts, bread, uh, play, shield, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, it's in Ephesians. We also have the seven gifts. All right, this is easy to remember. Wisdom, understanding, blah blah blah. All right. What about the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit? Oh, can you can you recite them? Uh -oh. Okay, you have done enough questions. Yeah. Okay. Keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. Okay, it's all here. All right. But I encourage you to remember them. It's easier. Three by three is easier. Okay. So love, joy, and peace. One group. All right. Okay. Patience, kindness, generosity, another group. Lastly, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. All right. That would be easier. So we have uh, a lot of resources on the YouTube. And last time I showed them, all right, the, 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 the what, the conformance, the confirmance, right? Yeah, I showed them this, okay? Uh, Bishop Boyer. But of course, there are many more, but this is just one of them, all right? That's why I want to play, just, just play a little bit, because we have no time. Hello, I am Bishop Earl Boyer of the Diocese of Lansing. Okay. I invite you to join me in seven brief meditations right. on the gifts of the Holy right. Spirit. Oh, we will be ref I'm sorry, I need to crush. Okay, <laughs> come in, in, all right? This is a heart and summit. So that's why, Father Law, oh, it's the summit. Okay, in these sacraments, Christ associates, okay, his church, the bride. Okay, the bride. On all of us, it's a sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice in the sense that, okay, because we are doing the, our priestly, uh, this is part of our, our priestly ministry, okay? Um, blah, 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 blah. Again, um, now, the Eucharist is offered in reparation for sins. Uh-huh, don't forget that. For the living and the dead. From the very beginning of Christianity, we pray over. Okay, we pray for the dead. So masters are all for the dead to express our belief in the communion of saints. And you believe in eternal life. If you do not believe in eternal life, what's the point of you know, praying for the dead? So if you do not pray for the dead, I question your belief in the eternal life. Do you still believe in them? Okay, it is also a memory of Jesus Passover. Jesus Passover, right? Luke chapter 22. Okay, here. Again, it's the Blessed Trinity. All right? The ministry of priests, priests okay? Christ as a priest, offer to the Father, right? Christ is the priest. And Christ himself is the sacrifice, okay? in the species of blood and wine, and the Holy Spirit consecrate, it's a power of the Holy Spirit consecrate the bread and the wine to become the body and blood of Jesus. And then this is a theological jargon, transubstantiation, okay? Okay, if you're interested in philosophy, then this will make you happy. Ah, for me, ah, my God, <laughs> it's, it's, it's very challenging. Okay, now uh, this is the, Okay, scriptural basis. Okay, we have all these. All right, John chapter six is important. Okay, explaining you know the bread of life, and then those last supper narratives in all four gospels. Okay, it's all there. Now, okay, um, yes, Catholics. Now, again, you see, reach the age of reason. This is Catholic, but Orthodox babies. Okay, so again, this is Catholic tradition. All right. Now, 
under normal circumstances, a Catholic can receive Holy Communion twice a day at most. I attend one mass, two mass, the third mass, oh, it's a matrimony mass. It's a different intention. I'm sorry, you have received it too. This one, no. Okay, please, okay. Yeah, some people enjoy receiving as many Holy Communion as possible. The kind of competition, I don't know. All right, <laughs> no good. Now, uh, according to regulation, a priest can celebrate at most three masses a day, but if we only have one Father Law here and no other priest to help him, he has to celebrate a masses. <laughs> there are always exceptions to rules, all right? <laughs> okay, the form. The form, the prayer is the form. The matter, it must be unleavened wheat bread, wheat, huh? You know, some university students, you know, they ask for permission from the bishop. Can we use uh, those uh, Shanghai knees in a bun? <laughs> Why? Well, so, well, we are Chinese, you know, we feel more, you know, associated with that. Okay, you have my permission. Go ahead. <laughs> the, the bishop has the, the, the power to grant them this exception only once huh? in your small community, huh? no more. <laughs> it cannot be regular, all right? Yes, okay, go ahead. Uh, can we have whiskey? <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> now let me tell you, you know, those universities, they are a little bit crazy. What, do, what, do, what did they ask for? They asked for bamboo wine, <laughs> alcohol, dissolving the bamboo leaves and then this green in color wow very chinese uh <laughs> <laughs> localized okay wow wow a lot of funny things all right only priests can do that okay i'm not going to do it cannot okay the effects i think uh there's one wow you're very happy for this renew scene you go to mass i confess your mighty god all right may the almighty god Give of sin. Okay, venial sin. All right. So you don't really need to go to confession. <laughs> okay. You, you have to adjust it yourself. All right. Uh, ba, ba, ba. All right. You can make this. Okay. The unity of the church. We have the suffering church in the purgatory. We have the pilgrim church, all of us on earth. We have the victorious church in heaven. All right. So again, Every time when we celebrate Mass, it's not just us. We have angels, we have saints, everybody participating. I, I would like you to not just make use of the imagination because in the rubrics of the Mass, right? We often say to the angels and saints, right? They are all present. Wow, wonderful, isn't it? Okay. Uh, receive the Holy Communion, okay, when they join Mass. Can you receive the Communion outside Mass? Yes or no? The answer is yes. Okay, if unfortunately you're lying in bed, you're sick, then we have people come over here, administrator, right? EMs are giving them, yes. The church is very good. <laughs> Okay, well, we receive Holy Communion these ones a year. I'm sure all of you are doing well. Okay. <laughs> Just in time. Overrun. Overrun. All right, I'm sorry, man. Okay, let's cut it. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's just say the prayer to finish this. All right. Okay. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. We stand before you, Holy Spirit. As we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All these we ask of you 
who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay.